Welcome to the Positive Productivity Podcast, episode number 14. Welcome to Positive Productivity Podcast, where we empower our audience to achieve and appreciate personal and professional success, especially in the face of adversity. Listen in as our guests reveal their stories of challenges and hurdles and how they overcame defeat and became triumphant in their endeavors. Let's get motivated and move forward with your host, Kim Sutton. Hey there, before I jump into this episode, I do want to let you know that this episode was previously recorded for the Influx Academy podcast, which if you listen to episode seven, Be the Bonsai, you'll hear that I decided I wasn't so passionate about the Influx Academy podcast idea, and I decided to scrap it before it even launched. This podcast episode, however, was really great. And rather than throw away the content and disrespect the guest time, I decided to go ahead and publish it here on the Positive Productivity Podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you so much for coming back for another episode of Influx Academy, where you can learn how to get better leads, bigger launches, and larger profits. I'm Kim Sutton with Sutton Creative Studios and the Influx Academy, and I'm so pleased to welcome our guest today, Randy Pierce. Randy is a business revolutionary and soul guide to gutsy woman coaches and creatives. Welcome, Randy. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for having me here. I am so honored to have you here. You were probably one of the first people that I actually met when I started participating in Facebook groups last year. I don't know why it took me so long to get involved with Facebook groups, but I think it was right about the same time as you were either launching or relaunching your 10-day cash flow challenge. And let me tell you, that made such a huge impact in my business. So thank you. You are so welcome. And that's exactly why I designed it. It's just pure content. And it's just an awesome way to support women like you who just, they need the right piece of information at the right time to break through. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. You're welcome. So could you tell, could you tell me in the audience how, how you developed the cash flow the 10 day cash flow challenge, like how long did it take you to put that together and where did people keep on requesting that information for you or how did the whole idea come about? Well, like a lot of what I do in my business, it was actually a divine download, a very strong intuitive uh, nudge, whatever you want to call it. I had an inkling to get women in my space and this was really that 10-day cash flow challenge was one of the stepping stones to me building my business to where I am today, which I am on my way to seven figures. And I have to say that following that intuitive nudge, it took me 24 hours from idea to get that group set up. And I had 23 women or something within 24 hours. And listen, I just taught what I knew about money and mindset and receiving money and finding clients and all the good stuff that happens when you really get your, I want to say your head on straight and your feet on the ground. And within the first seven days of the challenge, a handful of women had generated $12,000 in sales. I had no idea that was going to happen, (laughs) but it was so awesome to watch. And I think when you came in, it was probably my second or third round running that challenge And I just did it because I had an intuitive uh, hunch, and my instincts have always just been such gifts in my business. They've always led me to breakthroughs and next levels in my revenue and my next level of serving my clients. I specifically remember you asking the group on one of the daily assignments, or maybe it was just in one of the threads, what would you like your goal to be? And I don't think you even put a time frame to it. And I I set a figure and I said, I can do that this week. And you came back and you said, Kim, you can do that in the next day. And sure enough, not only did I do that, but I think I timed it by five. And I don't even remember what the figure was now. Yeah. And that just blew me away. Yeah. But I, I love how you said, though, that from the time that you got the idea, you just you got the group going and you had the signups and you got going right away. Is that how it normally works for you? Like from idea conception through build out? And I know there's, 
there's a bigger programs and we'll get to your the program that you just launched in a second but is, is that how you tend to work, like it, when you're passionate about it? Can you get it out right away like that? <laughs> yes. Uh, I, it's very much fly by the seat of my pants kind of <laughs> experience at randypierce.com. <laughs> and I'm laughing because what ends up happening when I really have a strong instinct, and I just know for me, and maybe your listeners can relate, listen, when you have something inside of you, inside of your belly that's telling you this is your next step, all I can encourage you to do is to follow it and make it as easy as possible. And one of the reasons why I started teaching, listen, let's just forget about time. Forget about the timeline because time doesn't exist. And I actually come from a very diverse background in sales and an education in crazy topics like nuclear physics and geology and, and studying the earth and understanding how the universe works. And I have to say that that part of my education really helped me understand just how fast you can tap into power that you can't even explain. There are still things that rule this universe and rule this planet and rule our galaxy that scientists cannot explain. They know what those patterns are, and they know now how to tap into some of that, that power. But I have to be honest, really getting back to the root of what really drove me to study things like nuclear physics and geology to understand how the universe worked and how to tap into energy that you cannot explain really helped me in my business. And one of the things that I do religiously is when I have a very clear instinct, I act on it. And it's one of the things that I actually taught in the 10-day cash flow challenge. You probably remember, collapse the timeline. What I tell my clients is this, go from idea to receiving income as quickly as you can. Now, the 10-day cash flow challenge was an exception. That was a free group. I had no idea what I was going to sell. I had no intention of selling it or offering anything. I just wanted to get women in my space because I had this idea about how I could help them make money. And you know what? It worked. And then, you know, that was one of the things that launched me going back to six figures. And I received private clients from that free challenge. I couldn't have even predicted that. I just, I followed the instinct, I acted, and I did it within 24 hours. That is awesome. So I have to ask, I suffer or benefit, depending on how you look at it, from chronic idea disorder, meaning I get ideas constantly, and then, like, I have stacks and stacks of them. Do you have the same? Uh, as a creative, I would have, you know, I'm a spiritual, creative kind of gal, but I'm also very practical. And there was a time in my entrepreneurial journey when I had idea overload. But I'll be honest, it's pretty focused right now. And I think we just, as creatives, have to find a way to channel our creative energy and to understand and to feel into what our next best step is because I do have a notebook that I keep ideas and, you know, random things that I want to do in my business at some point. I have a notebook so that I can get the idea out of my head and on paper and know that I can go back to that notebook at any time to research it or give it to my team and say, find something good in here. So that gives me mental space. So really the only thing that I have now are those really strong instinctive nudges that tell me exactly where my next step is to grow my business and make money is. And those are the actions that I take. So what advice would you have for channeling all those ideas into the right direction? Because I have to admit, I have that problem where I have all these ideas and finding I, I try to do too much, quite honestly. Right. Well, and as a creative, I think we are especially prone to idea overwhelm because we're tapped in, we're tuned in, and we're creative spirits. And so we sort of like to flow with the energy and see where it takes us. The trouble you get into is, number one, not getting that information out of your head so that you can create the mental space to figure out which ideas to act on and which ones not to. 
Uh, the other thing is I think it really comes down to pinpointing your core philosophies and your core messages of your brand for, for where it is and where you want to go next. And those are the topics that you focus on and share information on and create programs around. Anything other than that? gets put to the side. So that's a few ideas to help you understand which ones to act on and how to clear your mental space so that you can begin feeling into, this is my next step and this is where I'm going to go. And know that that will create positive results. I love it. I've actually had to steer a little bit away from using online note takers. I love Evernote but I actually had to pull out a whiteboard just so I could stay focused and have it in front of me while I'm sitting at my desk of this is what I'm working on right now, right? Yeah. And I do have a notebook as well. So tell me about your team. You just mentioned that you you do pass your notebook or your ideas to your team and ask them to pull something out for you. But how many people are on your team right now and how long did it take to get there? Right now I have a very small team. I have a part-time VA, I have a part-time web developer, and I have a part-time copywriter. These are all virtual people that I hire as I need them. Where I'm going, and it took me several years to get there, I've had a part-time to a full-time VA for probably four years. So that was four years into my coaching business before I hired a VA, which I recommend not doing. I actually recommend hiring even if you have to stretch it with your monthly income. I would have done it much sooner because it, it just creates so much space for me to focus on my purpose and serving clients, which is where the money is. But moving forward, I will probably end up having employees and that's a completely different level and one that will take probably several years to, from the time that your listeners start, that's usually several years into the process because it's a big responsibility. you got to make sure that you have a business that's capable of keeping those people either on employment contract or keeping them, you know, on a contract as a virtual team member ongoing and full time. That's a big responsibility. Oh, absolutely. And then if you need to let them go, just making sure that you have the unemployment tax or whatever that is to pay for the insurance and whatever you need to if, when you let them go if you have to. You have a, a part-time web developer, and I know you just went through, or you're going through a launch right now, a Supernova Success Club, and I saw that you posted that you had a backup site designed. I'd love to know how you decided to have a, a second site built if you did it at the same time as the first and how the whole launch process worked for you this time around. Well, to be honest, I really was not that focused on going into a heavy launch. And by a heavy launch, I mean, listen, we've all seen, take B-School, for example, right? I mean, that is a monster launch that Marie Forleo does once a year with affiliates and a solid team. I really wanted to go into Supernova Success Club fairly easy because I knew that I would only have virtual team members that were on contract basis. And I wanted to get it up and running as easily as possible. So I wasn't really focused on the launch. However, I did do a series of webinars that I'm still actually doing that will end up feeding more traffic into the Success Club because it'll be an on-demand learning center, so it's not time-based. Eventually, I will be organizing full-scale launches probably at the end of the year or towards the end of the year to spark end of the year, beginning of the year enrollment for large numbers. I mean, we're talking 300 women. So that's a big thing, and that will be in the very near future in the next uh, six months or so. In the meantime, I just really wanted to use resources that were available to me, in this case, my webinars, that I could leverage market exposure, list building, getting people into my webinar funnel, and then simply upselling them into the success club. Now that happened fairly easily and fairly pain-free, but where I did run into trouble was technical issues with building the membership site. So 
we were scheduled, I wanted to launch ahead of schedule, which didn't happen, which is fine. We still launched on, on schedule with our official launch date. But the only reason that I built that, I had that second backup site built was because we had issues with the first team that I hired, which, listen, this is part of entrepreneurship. I didn't spend much time with the frustration of that it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, and I didn't spend much time being frustrated at the people that I hired because I hired them. So this is where you learn to control your mindset and you learn to focus your energy in a place that is productive and helps you grow your business. So while it wasn't a perfect launch, I kept this launch purposely small. I mean, I've got two dozen women in the success club that I got through, you know, a series of four webinars, very easy. And I wanted to keep this first launch small because I wasn't quite sure how the membership site was going to be built out. And I'm glad that I kept it small because we did run into some issues that were technically based and, and team member related. And I had to hire a second team to build us a backup site, which I wasn't even mad about. Listen, this happens. I cannot afford to get sidetracked by what went wrong. I'm on a mission to help as many women as I can. I'm on a mission to build my business as fast and as easily as I can. And I have to focus on that. So that's what I did. And that's why there was a second backup site. I love it. I love that you're focusing. I mean, you're focusing on the positive and on growth and, and not on the negative. And I think that's what so many entrepreneurs, it, they get hung up on being perfect. And if you wait until everything's perfect, then chances are you're not going to launch. I mean, I don't know, even the, the huge, huge names, like the people who are bringing in $2 million per launch, I don't think they ever go through a cycle where they don't have a mishap or a technical glitch during a webinar or on a landing page or anything. So... I applaud you for rolling with the the small punches and keeping on going. Well, thank so, you. I appreciate that. And you're right. No one launches without issues. No one. Ever. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I forgot to make the, the login page when I just had a recent launch. But, I mean, I'm still trying to do more than I should myself, which, as you just said, you know, you should hire your VA earlier, but I'm guilty of trying to do it myself so I can get exactly how I want. Yeah. Right. And I know that's probably a, a situation that a lot of your clients are running to is trying to do it all themselves and and getting hung up and well, to borrow from Todd Herman in this sake or in this case, doing the ten dollar activities when they should be, as you said, focusing on the thousand dollar activities instead. Yeah. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the success club? Sure. So one of the reasons why I launched it is because a large portion of my particular market niche happens to be very smart, very strong self-starter women who are habitual and chronic do-it-yourselfers. They're not the greatest at hiring a team to take care of aspects of their business, to grow their market reach, and to grow their revenue. And because this is a large portion of my business and because I understand how important it is to support those women, mostly because I was one of those women for a long time, the important thing moving forward is really to support them in understanding there are only a few key components that you have to master in your business in order to move forward. And the Success Club is really designed to be an online learning, an on-demand learning platform where women, specifically the women that I serve, can go and learn right then and there how to do something so that they can go and do it and get it going and start making money so that they can hire the people that they need to help. And then, obviously, move up to the next level of coaching with me so that I can help support them in growing their business and growing their team in the most graceful way possible. I just want listeners to know that we did not rehearse this interview, that we have not talked about the Supernova Success Club before this call, and now I feel like this was 
I mean, it was divine. I feel like, like, hello, Kim. You should probably take a deeper look at this. <laughs> <laughs> and I have had teams. Um, I had, I just last year I had a, I hired way too fast. And I think that's something that a lot of business owners need to be aware of is you can pick up too much momentum and then it, it's out of control because you don't have it. You can't manage too much at one time. Right. Mm-hmm. So I did, I did have to cut back a bit, but I'm going to have to take a look. I am curious. I'd love to know what, what technology you're using to put your whole program together, if you wouldn't mind sharing that. Like, what are you using for your webinars and your membership platform? Would you mind sharing any of that? Yeah, absolutely. So for my webinars, I typically focus on zoom.us. GoToWebinar is a great resource. It's just not something that I'm prepared to spend whatever it is, $500 a month on. At some point, I may want to go that direction, but for now, zoom.us works perfectly fine for me. I do a lot of niche marketing and really paying attention to the needs of my market through some autoresponders and some deep niching email sequences through GetResponse. That is the email platform that I'm using right now. And I'll just add this as, as a little side note because I'm hoping that most of the women in your community are probably solopreneurs. I was with MailChimp for several years. They're a great provider. The trouble I was running into was trying to grow my list with that dang double opt-in. That was really keeping me stuck. And I I later read a stat. I think it's as much as 30% of double opt-ins don't actually confirm their email. So if you're using a an email manager that requires double opt-in, which I do understand Canada does, generally speaking, for any online business, you have to have a double opt-in form, and that's fine. Here in the U.S., we can have a single opt-in. So I went to get response because I had some flexibility in how I could market, and they had some automation tools that allowed me to deep niche my marketing, which means I can set up sequences that basically send information or transfer the subscriber or trigger some activity based on whether or not they open, whether or not they click, whether or not they download some tool. And so I'm really leaning into niche marketing, and that's where I'm going from here because it's super powerful. The other thing that I use is I have a basic WordPress site. But I do have some plugins that allow me to customize my site, and one of those plugins is Visual Composer. It's basically a custom builder. You might be equivalent to Visual Composer that I can think of off the top of my head is probably the Divi Builder by Elegant Themes. Now, I come from a web design background, so I'm technically versed in that way. So. I require a custom site, and I want to make it the way that I want to make it, so I use Visual Composer. I have other plugins, but that's the main one. And I'm trying to think of what else I use. Oh, for hosting, I actually go with GoDaddy. I've managed WordPress hosting. It's more expensive than the traditional thing, but it offers 24-hour monitoring. So the great thing behind that is you have added security. I've never had an issue with getting hacked anyway, but I think almost everyone who grows their brand to being a million-dollar brand with lots of visibility has to prepare for that. But the other thing that I like about the managed hosting is that they monitor it. So if anything happens or if I have too much traffic to my site and it crashes, they have it back up in about two seconds flat. So I do appreciate that. And unless you can think of anything else that you may have questions about, those are the tools that I can think of off the top of my head that I'm using. No, that's great. Thank you so much. So what is your biggest recommendation for somebody who's about to go into a launch? biggest recommendation for a launch, I would say, listen, you're going to have to put in the effort. You're going to have to put in the effort either for your, by yourself 
or in hiring a team who can support you. You're going to work more hours than you want to work. Your back is going to hurt. Your shoulders are going to hurt from sitting at the computer for so many hours. But if you really have something that drives you, a passion for creating a business that really supports your big dreams, and when you have a compassion, a passion and compassion for the people that you serve, if you've really got those two things, I'm telling you, you will absolutely be unstoppable. If you are willing to put in the work, if you are willing to get your genius out on paper or in an e-course or, you know, in some membership site where you can genuinely help people, that is the best thing that you can do for your business and you will absolutely soar as far as you allow yourself to. But it really has to start with those two pieces, passion for what you're doing and, and passion for your goals. So at the end of the day, I tell this to my clients all the time, listen, you can have goals and you can have big dreams, but if you are not mastering your business, you are not making the money that you need to live the lifestyle that you came here to live on a spiritual level. Anything that is stopping you from living the life that you want is a limitation. It's a limitation on your potential. It's a limitation on your spiritual capacity because you're really here to be an unlimited being. You're not here to be limited by money. In fact, that's the last reason why you're here. So you've got to master the business and really get that down and master serving people and being available to serve more people. And that's where the work comes in. So yes, you will have days when your neck and back hurt you and listen, you gotta push through and you gotta do more than you think you can. You can get a massage after you launch <laughs> and after your clients are taken care of. <laughs> I love it. So Randy, what is what is the best way for listeners to get in touch with you or to find out more? Where where should they go? Well, they can visit me at randypierce.com. You'll find lots of information. In fact, I've often got, you know, something on the homepage that is of value, whether it's to help you get to 10K months, whether it's to invite you into the 10-day cash flow challenge, which I still do run a couple of times a year. And I, I'm really here to be of service to you. So if you just want to get into the community through some free resource that I have on my front page of my website, that would be the best way to get in contact with me. Great. And I'll, it, again, that's randypierce.com, and I will have that in the show notes. Randy, I want to thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure, and I will be I will be checking out the Success Club for myself soon. Awesome. And thank you so much again. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I appreciate you being here. Hey, this is Kim Sutton, host of the Positive Productivity Podcast, and I just want to thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed what you heard and you want to share with others, please feel free to do so. I'd also appreciate your comments, your reviews, your ratings, and you can do that on iTunes or Stitcher or even by clicking through to my website at thekimsutton.com and just leave a comment down below the podcast. I also want to invite you to send me questions at any time that I can address on one of the future episodes. To send me a question to address on a future episode, just visit my website at thekimsutton.com and click on the contact tab at the top. Again, thank you so much for listening to this episode and I wish you a day filled with positive productivity.